Hey, what's up, guys, and welcome back to another Real Madrid review. Juventus 3, Real Madrid 1. What a surprise. And I'm not even trying to be sarcastic here. You might sound sarcastic, but it's actually a very surprising result because I thought Real Madrid were going to win. Like, I, I, I predicted 2 1 to Real Madrid. But what happened there? What happened there? Like, Look, I'm not trying to underestimate Juve because they have quality, they have talent, they have young players, and they are hungry. Right, young players, when you've got many good young players, they're always hungry to get more. But because they are in this transition, transition, sorry, it almost felt like Juve right now is a club that's very unstable and maybe, especially when it's a pre-season game, you can go and you can wrap up pre-season on a high. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, we should go out there or we have to go out there and, you know, you know win a 5-0 because clearly we are not capable of that. But at least go out there and at least show that you are capable of at least not losing that badly. And it tells you a lot that the first minute from kickoff, one minute in, we concede and we are 1-0 down. That tells you a lot. And again, this preseason has been so up and down, has been so shaky because we start off against AC Milan, 2-0 down, poor, not convincing, you know, not clinical, poor defensively. That was the first few issues. And then, okay, we come back, Valverde with the goals and, you know, we come back to win 3-2. Okay, we were brushed aside. Man United, yes, we played really well, but okay, we scored a early goal and then we scored a late goal. But we weren't dominant in those two wins. We weren't like dominant. The team that were dominant was when we played Barcelona. When Barcelona were the dominant side, they were you know going at us like this is the Liga, and we lose three 0 and it's almost like oh. The same stuff from last season is happening again. What is going on? It's the same stuff from last season again and again. And then you have one last game to go against Juventus to show that you're going to end it on a high. To show that, you know what, this season has been pretty good. And then you go out there and you lose 3-1, considering 1 in the first minute, and then 1 in the 20th minute, and then 1 in the last minute of the game. I mean, look. It's pretty shocking, if I was to say, because I'll be honest, I didn't watch this game. So I'm not going to say, oh, I watched the game. But I, you know, checked the score. I was like, 3-1. Like, 3-1. Like, my world. That is crazy. And honestly, something needs to really be addressed here. Defensively, it's looking bad like it's actually looking bad now in terms of the most minutes we saw the players who was who were clearly favored by Ancelotti Frank de Sia played a lot Militao has played a lot Carvajal has played a lot Alaba has played a lot and then players like Rudiger has played lesser Mendy obviously got the injury but I'm thinking to myself is that back four excluding Courtois of Frank de Sia who is good Alaba, Militao and Carvajal going to be able to play together and not leak goals as we've seen. Because I think that's the favourite f- back four. I think that's the favourite back four. I think Frank Garcia is obviously going to play left back now, now that Mandy's injured. Alaba and Militao I think will be the centre-back partnership and we don't have a right back. So the right back situation has to be addressed. And also centre-back, like Militao can, have a, can make mistakes. Alaba also a bit shaky and I'm thinking to myself you've got Antonio Rudiger yes Alaba is more of a leader maybe maybe actually thinks okay we need more of a leader to partner up with Militao because Rudiger and Militao are actually kind of similar in terms of how they play but Alaba is different because it's not your typical centre back that is like very very fast you know um, he's more of a leader in that team and I don't think Rudiger is um as much as a leader as Alaba is. But I'm thinking to myself, is having a leader type player 
more important than having a player that can prove week in week out that he is the one. Now, I'm not saying that Rudiger will play better than Alaba. I'm not saying that. But I want to say that we should at least give Antonio Rudiger a chance to get minutes to play. To show that maybe, you know what, I should be the one playing as the first teamer. Because a month ago, it came out already, one month ago, we talked about this. Alaba and Militao were starters one month ago. Like, it's been one month, it's one month before pre-season and, you know, it's getting leaked out that Alaba and Militao are already the main starters. Like, come on. But I'm not trying to, you know, push the blame to Alaba or Militao or Carvajal or Fantasia because I don't think you can blame it on individual level. Like, it's a team, it's a collective. And, yes, we need a right back Carvajal, I don't think, you know, is the long-term solution. Fern Garcia, he's just joined. The back line, of course, you can you know put some blame, but I'm not going to target anyone individually. The midfield, I thought we had a pretty shaky game. Um, obviously, Kamavinga, Bellingham, Crows, um, having good games. I mean, Cruz with the assist is magical. That assist is magical. Um, Kamavinga and Bellingham are like the two players who've, played every, who've started every game, I believe, or something like that. Um, so they are definitely untouchable. They're definitely crucial players. Vinny Jr. once again scoring, um, proving he's going to be the best player in the world. No doubt, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure um, if he continues his form like this into the season. Um, and I think he's going to be Real Madrid's best player next season. I really do think so. Um, in terms of um, the goals, let's talk about the first goal. It's a well-worked goal. Let's be honest, all three of Juve's goals were well-worked. They're not like, you know, just luck. They're not luck because realistically in football, there's no, oh, it's just pure luck. There has to be a level of, let's just work very hard for it. And again, the first shot of the post, Maurice Akin, right there, right time, rebound. It's a tap-in, but it's a good tap-in. It's a, it's what we always say with players who maybe score a lot of tap-ins, but you have to be there at the right time to, you know, put the ball in the back of that, even if it's just a tap-in, because a tap-in isn't, you know, a tap-in if you're not there, if you get what I'm saying. So, Marius Akin did really well to get into the position that he was. It's a good goal. Yes, it's a tap-in, but he did well to get to his position. So, I'll give him that. Second goal, again, Timo Tiber, new signing for Juventus. It's a pretty decent goal again they play really well squares it lays it off to Vea again basically an empty net empty goal it's a free goal but again Vea shouldn't even be in that position with no one marking him that is the, my problem like someone has to go there and you know cover the spaces you can't give Timothy Vea all the space and all the time in the world to shoot because Courtois is not going to be able to cover the whole goal by himself. So someone has to prevent that shot. That shot is preventable. If someone just gets in there, gets a block, gets a tackle, maybe the outcome would have changed. But no one was there. And Vea had the space, had the time, had the opportunity to shoot and scored. Right? That second goal was poor as well. Right? In fact, it's worse than the first goal. Real Madrid responded. Vinny Jr. Great goal. What a pass by Cruz. Forward, Vinny Jr. Good goal. Chesney couldn't do anything about that. No. Once again, how many times have we seen it? When Real Madrid are poor, Vinny Jr. is always there to get a goal back or perform really, really well and get something back. But this time, it didn't really lead to a comeback. Um, Juve, last minute of the game, counter-attack. Again, why is Militao the only player there? Um, you know, why is he the only centre-back there? He's the only one. And, yeah, I mean... It's, it was a 3v1 at a point, um, but, you know, they worked well, and, you know, they score. So, great goal, Vlaovic. Um, Kortok could have saved it, maybe, but um, I'm not going to blame him for that. But overall, you get what I'm saying. The problem here is defensive issues, because I have no doubt that Real Madrid can score. Like, okay, Real Madrid need to put the ball in the back of the net more, because... In the last two games, was it like 63 shots, one goal? Of course, Real Madrid need a striker to put the ball in the back of the net. But, if you concede five goals, there's no point, you know, bothering about scoring. Because if you lose 4-0 
against Barcelona, I don't think any striker in the world, you know, at their prime will alone get you to win 5-4. Like, I don't think anyone can do it by themselves to get you 5-4. So, like I said, it's a collective, it's a teamwork, and so is the defensive issues. It's a teamwork, it's a team effort, and the defensive problems have to be fixed. Because again, if you score a goal, you can have a chance to win. If you don't score a goal, but you defend well, you're probably not going to win. But if you concede too many goals, no matter how much you score, you're never really going to make up for it. Because as Sir Alex Ferguson once said, you know, attack winning games, defend winning titles. And if Real Madrid want to strive to win Champions Leagues, La Liga, Copa del Rey, Super Copas, the defence has to be spot on, has to be a 10 out of 10. And right now we are seeing 6, maybe 7 out of 10. We're not seeing anywhere near 10 out of 10. So something has to change because we've considered 8 goals in this preseason tour and that is simply not good enough. That's 2, ga- two goals a match, a game. Like, that's just not good enough. So... You know, let's hope that we can improve. Ancelotti said that, you know, the defensive issues were, quote, easy to improve. I'm sorry, but you can't come out and say, oh, the issues that we have are, you know, easy to be solved and improved. Like, come on, you can't say that. But let's see what happens. Um, personally, pre-season, you can't really take too much in terms of the, of the results. Of course, you look at how we play. It's pretty similar to what the result is. So we have to focus on the performance and how we have played. Training-wise, look back at how we have played these last four games. Four games, I would say three of them are, have been not convincing at all. Maybe Manchester United, you can say we've been good. But the other three isn't convincing. If you start the season off like that, you're going to lose to Atleti Club Bilbao. And that is the problem here. So... We need to solve these issues in the next week, week and a half, until the season starts. Because right now, it's the 3rd of August. The season starts on the 13th of August, I believe. So you've got 10 days, one and a half week left to fix and solve these issues. But let's see um, if we can do it. But um, I hope you guys have enjoyed today's video. Let me know your thoughts down below. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. Hit the like button when you did, subscribe to the channel on already, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Pish!